Hi everybody! I'm here today to do something a little bit different and it was something I was kind of in two minds about um, but I was talking to Leanne from Literary Diversions and she seemed to think it was a good idea so I'm just going to roll with it. I'm going to be reading some of my own writing. Now I haven't said in any of my videos before that I write myself. It's something I'm really interested in and it's something I've been doing for a long time and ideally would like to do professionally someday. So I thought you know, I would like to explore and share what I've been up to. So just as a starting point, um, I was actually sort of inspired to get back into my writing when I was at home the other week and I was looking through all these old anthologies that I was published in as a kid and the first time I was published I was nine years old and I was in primary five. So I actually rediscovered the story that I wrote then in like an anthology of like children's ghost stories. I would like to believe that my writing has improved slightly. Once upon a Halloween, when Jenny the Fake Witch and Katie the Wicked Queen were guising the horrific haunted street called Mulberry Drive, cheery name, not the place, in Transylvania at 9pm, they were terrified and alone. Jenny, a very wild brunette with a jolly smile, was a spooktacular witch, and Katie, a very laid-back character with extremely long hair, was a petrifying queen. After a while, Helen and Melody, their arch-enemies, appeared, a nasty couple with sly expressions and beady eyes. Helen wore a costume of a headless girl, and Melody was a spooky ghost. There was a trail of chicken feed on the ground, so the girls followed it. Melody and Helen started slagging Jenny and Katie off and boasting. We'll get more sweets than you, ha ha, Helen chanted. Katie added, bet the chicken will get you. They knocked on the door of a castle, believed to be Dracula's. The door swung open and they stepped inside. There was a blinding flash and all Katie and Jenny could see was Melody and Helen being executed at the top of the stairs and blood seeping through everything. We'll be next, Katie squealed. Escape, Jenny wailed, but they couldn't. The door was sealed, it was a Halloween trap. If you don't want to be murdered, kill the mad chicken. If you succeed, you go home. If you don't, the chicken eats you, Dracula thundered. But Jenny and Katie had already slain the mad, mad chicken. Poof, they were back home. Never again, they said together. I really, really hope that what I'm about to read that I've written recently is slightly better than that. I mean, solid first attempt. You can't expect Shakespeare from a nine-year-old. The other day, um, I actually went along to a refreshers event that the Creative Writing and Publishing Society were running at uni, and I was technically a member last year, but I never actually made it along to any of their writing events, so I thought, this year, it's my last year, I'm going to get into the spirit of things. I'm going to go and do some writing with them, I'm going to write with them on a regular basis and hopefully submit to their magazine that they produce semesterly because I think that would be a really nice thing to do to finally get my writing out there, especially when it's my last year of my degree. It was mainly flash fiction because we never had any more than 10 minutes on each exercise. The first exercise we had to do, um, we were given prompts and it was just like one word and the theme of the whole event was changes. So I think I had one that said election, but I didn't feel particularly inspired by that. So I decided to work with an idea based around change that I had from when I visited the Welcome Collection the other week. There was this exhibition called, I can't remember what it was called, but it was by the artist Alice Anderson. And it was all about how she binds these objects in copper wire and eventually it kind of like squishes them and it changes their form and I decided that was quite interesting so the first thing that I wrote was kind of based off that exhibition. We bound the cassette tapes with copper wire just the way father taught us to. At the time it seemed pointless forcing these inanimate objects into a metamorphosis so incongruous with their usual nature. Solid, unchanging, lifeless. Perhaps it was only fitting that they should now be resigned to an eternity of being tucked away in the dark alongside Alice's cold white body like the bears and dolls of her not-so-distant youth. The second one we had to do was we had to write a descriptive piece about somebody we either loved or hated using no um, visual description. We were allowed to obviously use like metaphor and stuff but we couldn't say like we couldn't talk about their hair or their eyes or anything about their physical appearance. Everything that comes from his mouth was poison Poison so foul that its smothering stench emanated from his mouth every time the prejudice uncurled from his lips. It didn't seem totally unreasonable to believe that there was a landfill within him. 
Over the years, he had accumulated hatred. Whether justified or not, the refuse of toxic opinions piling higher and higher as it refused to degrade to something more useful. And I was choking on it, choking on the fumes of his close-mindedness. I coughed and coughed, but could not restrain myself from breathing in his words and catalyzing them into my own anger. I think I wanted to be sick all, all along. I had to take an image from that next that we particularly liked and think about something else that made us feel that way. And so I went with the whole coughing and choking thing. I always said I hated smoking. As my dad craned his neck around the back door, furtively puff, puff, puffing away in a manner that said, I care about my little girl, I ached with the bone-deep fear of losing him. I spluttered in his presence, a melodramatic show of disgust that meant nothing but what I had been told it meant by the blackened lungs on show at the Science Museum. I always said I hated smoking, but now I'm not so sure. Maybe I just hated the fact that he had figured out the meaning of coping mechanism. The next exercise that we did, we had to start off telling a story and then in the last line there would be a twist. And I think I ruined some people's childhood with this one. I'm really, really sorry if I ruin yours as well, but this is not the twist I intended. This is just where it ended up going. It fits and you shall be my wife. Gasps all around as little Cinder stands and totters, a demure smile playing upon her lips to Prince Charming's side. Always that same fixed expression, beauty standards upheld by her lips glowing red like her old pal Snow's bit an apple before it fell to the ground and a grimy fate. Nobody wanted poor little Cinder's, her innocent blue eyes gazing up at Charming. She has never seen anything as beautiful as the pleasure that lights up his face and flushes his cheeks like roses as he proclaims his, her his one true love. Of course, Charming himself cannot believe his luck either, his dream woman, his perfect fit, after months of toil and searching. Never will I buy a doll from anywhere else again, Charming uses as he zips up his flies. Second to last one that I'm going to share with you is we did a thing where we passed around a sheet of paper and we tried to write as much of a sentence as possible before handing it over to the next person. So the first half of this was made up of sentences from other people, which is maybe why it sounded a little bit disjointed. And then the second half was my continuation of it. I guess I didn't mind too much when you shut the door. The hearts you broke, the words shattered, their pieces on the floor, irredeemable. And whenever I tried to pick them up, my fingers bled fresh on their sharp edges. The worst thing is, it wasn't only my heart that lay among the shattered pieces, it was also my left eye that was damaged beyond all repair by the look you gave me that, in not so many words, said, I need to go. I wanted to kiss you one last time, to taste the fresh sentiment hidden along your gums. I hoped that there would be new, tender words tucked away behind your teeth, but instead you shook your head. You shook your head and sighed, saying, I don't care anymore. And in that moment, I knew all your words were cyanide. And the last one that I'm going to share was we had to, we all got given two quotes in our groups and we had to choose which one to write from. Everyone had to do the same quote. And we chose, we are all failures, at least the best of us are, which is a quote by J.M. Barry. The twist on this challenge was that we weren't actually allowed to stop writing. We weren't allowed to stop to think, don't take your pen off the page. I'm not actually too pleased with this one. Like it's, probably my least favourite one that I wrote. The first time I failed was when I was eight and won the softball tournament. It wasn't anything serious, only a stupid little time waster Brown Owl thought would be relevant to our World Cultures badge. World Cultures badge. As if softball were anything more exotic than rounders with a fancy name. I told my grandmother that weekend over mince and tatties. So, she snapped. Perhaps she did not hear me correctly. I repeated myself and she shook her head, violently. No, but you didn't really succeed, did you? But I won! My eight-year-old self wailed, indignant and feeling the warm rush of humiliation spread through my cheeks. What does it matter if you won or not? Did you even want to play? Those are the sort of short bits of flash fiction I worked on at the writing workshop. Looking forward to doing some more writing soon, hopefully getting some of my work out in um, the Society magazine and then who knows, it's really something I'd like to pursue further. I'm really, really sorry for making such a self-absorbed video and it's okay if you, you don't care. I will be back to normal bookish videos after this one, so just bear with me if listening to original writing, which is a little bit shit, is not really your thing. Don't worry, I will be back to the usual content soon. Bye!